Honey, I'm home. Hi, I'm Sangeeta and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how to make chole bhature and along with it I'm going to show you how to make uh, the mirchi achar as well as potato sabzi. So I went to Delhi about a few months back and I got to try Haldi Ram's uh, chole bhature and the highlight of the dish was the potato sabzi that they served with it and it was absolutely delicious. So I'm going to try and replicate the same potato sabzi. So let's get started. So to start off, I have over here 250 grams of chana that I've soaked for 24 hours. You can soak it overnight and you should soak it until it doubles in size. So let's toss in the kabuli chana into a pressure cooker. Now I'm going to add some more water to cover the kabuli chana. Just enough water to cook it. So I'm going to add about half a cup more of water and you're going to add just enough water so that it covers the kabuli channa. All right. Now we're going to turn on the flame to a high and we're going to cook this. So before that. So as you may have noticed, the choli that we get at restaurants have a nice color to it. So how are you going to bring out that color? It's very simple. We're going to add chaipati tea. All right, so let me show you how to incorporate this into the chana. So I'm going to add a teaspoon of tea into this. It's a tea infuser, I think that's what it's called. You can also use a clean cloth or even a clean handkerchief. All right, you can just put a teaspoon of tea into it. Make a potli, try, uh, tie it tight and then drop it into the uh, chole. That goes right in. I'm going to close this. And that's about it. The water has come to a boil almost. Now I'm going to drop in the tea mesh. And I'm also going to add two bay leaf. Okay, this is small, so I'm going to add three. If your leaves are long, just add two. And I'm also going to season this with salt. So let's add two teaspoons of salt. Now we are going to add three cloves of garlic. As you can see, the cloves are quite big. Now, if your garlic is small, you're going to use about four to five garlic pods. All right, so let's drop that in. And let's close the lid. Now we're going to cook this for five to six whistles until done. This cooker of mine would take about six whistles. Yours might differ, but you're going to cook it until it becomes really soft. So whistle number one is already done. I'm waiting for whistle number two. So I'm waiting for the last whistle. Okay, here it comes. Now I'm going to turn off the flame. And let the pressure come out and then we're going to open it. So let's start with the gravy. We are going to use six medium sized onions. This is almost medium small, but I'm going to use six of these. Now if you have big onions, like those real big ones, you're going to use only three of those. Now there are uh, two ways to do it. You can either throw these into a food processor and you're going to chop it really fine. Or you can also chop it, uh, sorry, you're going to slice it really thin. So there are two ways, either chop it really fine or slice it really thin. I'm also going to drop in two green chilies. These are long for sure, but it's not that spicy. Uh, depends on your spice tolerance. If you want, you can just add one of these. So I'm going to take the top off and we're going to chop this finely. But if you don't like it too spicy, you can obviously just slit and then throw it into the gravy so that you can pick it up later. It's 
done. Heat up a pan and now we're going to drop in a tablespoon and a half of ghee. along with a teaspoon of cooking oil. Drop in the finely chopped onion and green chili. We are going to saute this on medium flame until it turns light golden brown. And meanwhile, let's check the chana. So let's see if this is cooked. I'm going to take one. And I'm going to press it. Ah, you can see it's well cooked. And that's it. I'm going to remove the tea strainer. Oh, actually, have you uh, noticed a change in color? You can see it's much darker now. And we're going to take the garlic out and mash it. You can see how easily it mashes and put it back in. So we have three cloves of garlic. We're going to do that like with all three. Okay, done. And I'm going to take the bay leaf out as well. So as you can see the onion has changed color and it doesn't smell raw anymore. Now we are going to drop in one and a half teaspoon of whole jeera or cumin seeds. One and a half teaspoon of it. Along with it we are also going to add a pinch of hing asafoetida. Just a pinch. And let's mix this up. And we are going to saute this for at least two minutes. And uh, the flame is still on medium. Now in goes one teaspoon of ginger and one tablespoon of garlic. The ginger and garlic is uh, minced or paste. You can use fresh ones or, can, or you can also use the store bought ones. Now you're going to saute this until the raw smell disappears. It will take you about a minute or two. Now I'm going to add one and a half teaspoon of Kashmiri red chilli powder. Let's give it a mix. You have to make sure that your masalas do not burn. So do this either on medium flame or low flame. I'm going to add one fourth of a teaspoon of cinnamon powder. Now uh, you can either add cinnamon stick or you can powder your own cinnamon. So that's one fourth of a teaspoon of cinnamon powder. You can see that the onions have such beautiful gorgeous color on it. And that's why we use Kashmiri red chili powder. Now I'm going to add one teaspoon of coriander powder and one and a half teaspoon of jeera powder let's give this a mix now add one teaspoon of anardana followed by one teaspoon of chaat masala and one teaspoon of garam masala let's give this a mix Now add 1 teaspoon of fenugreek leaf and a tablespoon of chana masala. I am using MTR, you can use whichever. Let's give this a mix. And that's all the dry masalas. Do this on low to medium flame. 
Now let's chop up three medium sized tomatoes. I was lazy to chop it up so I just throw it into the <coughs> food processor. Excuse me. Now let's give this a mix. Increase the flame to a medium high and we're going to cook these tomatoes. It will take you about 5 minutes. The tomatoes have cooked and I'm going to drop in the cooked chana. Let's mix this up. Now I'm going to place the lid and turn the flame to a low and we're going to cook this for 7 minutes. You can add some more water into the gravy if you like it a little more loose, but I like my gravy to be a little thick, so I will not be adding any more water into this, but please don't add too much of water. Don't make it liquidy at all, okay? Oh, I sound like a teacher, sorry. I'm going to give the gravy a taste. The spice is perfect. But it requires a little more salt. So I'm going to add a teaspoon of salt. So adjust salt to your liking. We're going to mix this up and then place the lid back on and cook it for another three minutes. Our gravy is almost done. Now for the finishing touches, you're going to chop in a handful of coriander leaves. this up and turn on the flame I'm going to place the lid back on and I'll be only opening it after another five minutes So I have washed and cleaned seven potatoes of this size. Now if you're using big potatoes, you're going to use only three of those. So I'm going to peel them, wash and clean and then uh, throw in some water into your pressure cooker and then we're going to close the lid and cook this for two whistles. Also, if you're new to this channel, hi and welcome. Do not forget to like, share and subscribe to my channel. You can also follow me on my Instagram page at Honey I'm Home. You can find the link down below in the description box. You can also find the ingredients down below in the description box. Chop the potatoes into fours like so. And please don't chop it small. Heat up a pan and you're going to pour some mustard oil. Now we're going to shallow fry the potatoes until it becomes golden brown. I think I might have about 4 tablespoons of oil in this. Now if you don't like the taste of mustard oil, you can of course use sunflower oil. But uh, the taste wouldn't be the same, but uh, it should be alright. Slowly toss in the potatoes. And shallow fry the potatoes. Now once the potatoes have evenly browned, you can see it's golden brown, we are going to add the dry masalas. Toss in half a teaspoon of dry chili flakes. 1 teaspoon of coriander powder, 1 teaspoon of whole jeera, one fourth of a teaspoon of turmeric powder, salt, that's up to you. A pinch of hing, a teaspoon of chaat masala, half 
half a teaspoon of anar dana. Now let's give this a mix. Do this on low flame. Saute this for a minute or two. Now chop in some fresh coriander leaf. And give it this a mix. Turn off the flame and serve it hot. Oh, it looks delicious. Now let's make the instant green chili achar. For that you need, uh, I've taken about 7 or 8 green chilies. And these are long, you can use the smaller ones if you wish to. And clean this up and dry it really well. Slit the green chilies like so. Heat up a pan and add 3 tablespoons of mustard oil. On medium flame, let the mustard oil smoke up. Now add the green chilies and saute. You're going to be careful because it's going to splutter. Press the chili slightly, like so, and then keep stirring it. Make sure that the chili blister, like so. Now on low flame, let's add one fourth of a teaspoon of Kashmiri red chili powder, half a teaspoon of vinegar. I'm going to add some salt. One fourth of a teaspoon of turmeric powder. Give this a mix. Turn off the flame. Add one fourth of a teaspoon of chaat masala. And add 2 tablespoons of mustard, yellow mustard seed. And give this a mix. <clears throat> Saute for a minute and it's ready. So let's make bature. To start off, you need four tablespoon of rava or semolina. So that's one, two, three, and four. Now I'm going to pour in one fourth cup of warm water. Let's give this a mix and I'm going to rest this for 5 minutes until it softens. Now into a white vessel you're going to add 2 cups of all purpose flour. So this cup measures 250. So that's 1 cup and 1 more cup. Add a teaspoon of salt, add a teaspoon of sugar, add half a teaspoon of baking powder. Now give this a mix. Add 
टू हीप्ड टेबल स्पून ऑफ योग Now tossing the rava, as you can see, it's already softened. Now mix it up. I'm going to start with the spoon and then uh, use my hand. So I'm not sure how much milk we might need to make this a dough. So. I have measured out 75 ml of warm milk. Now we're going to gradually add this into the flour and see as to when it will bind. Now it depends on your flour. The flour that you're using might need more or less milk. So gradually add the milk and start kneading the flour so that you can make a nice smooth dough. I'm going to add the rest of the milk. So 75 ml right there. Let's give this a mix. I might need more milk. So now I've measured 50 ml of milk. Let's pour that in. Little at a time. And mix this up. So that's enough milk. I've used a total of 100 ml. It might look sticky, but that's all right. You're going to knead it and then you're going to smash the dough onto the vessel. Like so. And you'll end up with a smooth dough. The dough is getting a lot more smoother. It's still slightly sticky, but still all right. Now we're going to add a tablespoon and a half of oil and now let's mix it up do not make a dry dough your dough should be a slightly sticky and very very soft Keep kneading this until the oil completely gets into the dough. After about 8 minutes, you'll get a very smooth dough like so. As you can see, it's not dry. It's a very smooth dough and a very hydrated dough. Make a ball like so. And we're going to let this rest for half an hour and keep this closed use a cling film or use a plate and cover it now let's prep the place for frying bhature take the pan of your choice and heat it up and once it's heated up pour in oil now let's check on our dough Can see how soft and pliable the dough is and it stretches really well without tearing so this is how your dough should be also called the window pane test you can make it really thin without the dough tearing beautiful that's done now let's take out portions of the dough and make a ball give it this big and roll it in between your palms like so let's keep that aside let's make a few more So I've seen people use oil to flatten the dough out, but somehow that doesn't work out for me. I'm going to use dry flour instead. So some maida. 
on both sides. And flatten it out. It shouldn't be too thin, but uh, make sure it's not too thick either. How about this thick? And let the oil heat up and then we are going to start frying. The oil shouldn't be too hot, so let's give it a test. I've dropped in a small piece of the dough and yeah, it's almost done. So the oil is ready. Let's drop in the flattened out bhaturi. Let's gently drop it in and fry. Press it a little so that it pokes up. Now gently flip it and allow it to cook on the other side as well. And that's done. Let me show you how to make one more. 